Okay then gang, so now we can successfully get data offline thanks to Firestore database and indexed DB because Firestore is now syncing indexed DB with our data while we're online so that when we go offline we can still access the data out of this indexed DB so we can show it to the user and we can see that data if we click on remote documents over here we can see the recipes collection, we have two documents, and if we expand these and go to the documents and the fields, we can see the ingredients and the title. So all of this data is still being stored inside IndexedDB, and all of this other stuff is to do with the functionality of Firestore database in the background. So if we're trying to add new data from the front end or do something else, make a query for data, then it's all gonna get stored in here, especially when we're offline, so that when we come back offline, it's got it there ready and waiting, so that when we come back online it can make those queries or add the new documents etc so that's what we're going to look at now adding new documents because at the minute we're not doing that yeah we've got an add button over here and we can type some stuff in here but if we click add nothing is going to happen yet so we're going to hook up this functionality and we're going to remain online to do this to begin with so first of all what i want to do is get a reference to this form from our dom so if we head back over to our index file and we want to get this form right here right add recipe so we could use this clash right here but since this is just the only form on the page i will use that tag instead so let me come down to the bottom of the db file because we're going to do some db interaction here to add a new document and i'm going to say add new recipe like so and then we'll create a constant we'll call that form and set it equal to documents dot query selector and we want the form so now we have a reference to that form from the dom and what we want to do is add an event listener to it to listen for submit events when we submit the form so to do that we'll say form spell this correctly dot add event listener and we want to listen for the submit events then we're going to fire a callback when this occurs and we take the event object which represents that submit inside. Now the first thing I'm going to do is take that event object and prevent the default action by using the method prevent default because the default action of a form when a user submits it is that it refreshes the page. We don't want to do that. We want to prevent that action. Hence we say prevent default. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is construct an object which now represents the new recipe. So a user is going to type in a title here and ingredients here and together they're going to make up a document or an object in the case of JavaScript. So let's now do that. I'm going to now create a new const called a recipe and set that equal to a new object. And inside this object, we have two different properties. We have the name or rather, I think it's called the title. So we'll say title and then we want to say form, which is this reference right here. And if we look in the HTML, then we have these different inputs right here. Now this one has an ID of title. Now to get a reference on this input, I could do another query selector to grab this ID, or because I already have a reference to this, I can say form dot whatever the ID is, title. And that gets us a reference of this as well. So I'm gonna say form dot title, then I want the value from that form field. So I say dot value to get that. Okay, so now I have the title. The next one we want are the ingredients. So we'll say ingredients is form dot ingredients because that's the ID of this other field right here, ingredients. Then we want the value of that one as well. Okay, so now we have this object constructed that is basically gonna represent the new document that we want to add to the Firestore database. So how do we do that now? How do we take this data, this object, and save it as a document to the database? Well, remember, we use DB because that's the constant we created to interact with the database. We've used it so far up here and here. And then we go into the recipes collection. So we say dot collection and recipes to get a reference to that. Then we just use a method called add to add a new document. And all we have to do is pass in a JavaScript object here, which represents that new document. So I'm going to pass in a recipe like so. And this is asynchronous takes some time to do and it returns a promise so I'm not going to do dot then because we don't need to do anything after this but what I will do is try and catch any errors if there are any and if there is an error then we're going to pass that into this callback function where we will just console dot log 
the error itself, just so we can see what's going on if there is an error. Okay, so one more thing to do, and that is to grab the form reference and the title field and set the value back to nothing because once someone's added something, I want to kind of reset the form. Now I could use, you know, the reset method, but I'm just doing this manually to show you what I'm doing. Form.ingredients dot value is equal to an empty string as well. So it's going to empty those fields again. So if we want to add a new one, we don't have to delete the old one first of all. Okay, so that is pretty much it. That's all we need to do. And what I'm going to do now is go over to my service worker because we've changed right here a file that's cached, right? So if we just go in refresh over here, then we're still going to get that old cached file, the old db.js file. So I'm going to change site dynamic since we're storing this file in the dynamic cache to v3. And then I'm going to save this. So now we can head over to the browser and skip waiting to activate that new service worker version. I'm going to refresh over here and check the cache storage. Okay, so now we have site dynamic v3 as well. And just to check that it's got the updated db file, let's go to db and scroll down and we can see this code right here. Cool. So this is all fine. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is try adding a new document. And by the way, I've got open my Firestore database right here and we can see there's two documents in there at the minute which represent these two things right here. So what I'm going to do is add a new one and what have we got so far? We've got Ninja Soup and Veg Burger. Okay, let's just say something like, I don't know, Ninja Noodles and we'll say Tofu and Noodles and Garlic Oil. You can probably tell the food I like just by this app. Um, I'm going to add that. We can see that resets these forms right here. And we can see now we get this new recipe. And if we go to the database, we can see this new recipe down here somewhere. Probably the top one. There it is. So just briefly, again, how is this all working? Because all we do when we click submit is actually add this to the database. We're not saying add it to the DOM as well. So why do we see it in the DOM? So you should be able to understand that we add it here and then it gets added to the Firestore. But then what happens is that because we have a change in our Firestore database, because we set up this on snapshot method before, it listens to those changes, we get that change back, we can see that it's an added type, and then we pass that document into our render recipe function, which remember, outputs it to the DOM over here. So that's why we see it here pretty much straight away. Okay, so this is all working online. But what about if we try to do this offline? Is this still going to work? Well, let me now go offline and refresh. Now we can see we still get the data because we saw that in the last video it was stored inside here. All of this stuff goes inside this database right here and we still have access to the data. But what happens if we try to add something? Well, let me do another recipe. I'm going to say fruit smoothie. And we'll just say bananas, orange, and lemon, whatever. And I'm going to add this. Now, notice it goes over here. It still gets added. Now, why is that? Because we're offline and we shouldn't be able to add this to the database. But if we check the database over here, it's not there, right? So something's going on in the background here. And what's happening is Firestore is still communicating with indexed db and it's still kind of adding it to the index db and then when we set up this listener over here on snapshot not only is this listening for changes in this database but it's also listening to changes in our actual local data over here that firestore is handling around index db so even when that changes we can still get that snapshot back and it behaves exactly the same way and that kind of demonstrates how truly awesome Firestore is as a database for PWAs. So what we're going to do now is see what happens when we go back online. Because if we go back online, we have this data locally, but this isn't up to date with that data. But watch this. If I go back online now, I'm going to go to Service Worker, Online, Refresh. Notice over here, that new document just got added straight away. So in the background, Firestore is syncing all of this. So it's hanging around here in one of these little database areas. And then as soon as we go back online, it's taking that change that we made and it's pushing it to the Firestore database. So it's keeping it in sync with our application over here. 
So this is all pretty incredible. If this doesn't excite you, then I really don't have any hope for you as a front end developer. But anyway, now we can store data locally in our browser database, right? And interact with that the same way we would by just normally using a Firestore database. We don't need to do anything different like in on snapshot or to add new documents or later on to delete documents. It's all the same as if we were online and Firestore takes care of all the heavy lifting under the hood to interact with IndexedDB and keep everything in sync in the background with our Firestore database. So now we've seen that in the next video, let's have a look at how we can actually remove documents by clicking on these little trash cans right here.